Hey everyone, welcome to another InvestPal Stories today. So continuing on from last time, I know uh, we touched on our Slacks Creek property or how I got into Logan and that's why I wanted to be able to jump into uh, our Slacks Creek property today. Um, I've already written an article about how I acquired the property and what I like about it on, on my blog So I thought there's no point in terms of repeating myself But what we could do today is to actually go through the property uh, as of uh, Basically as of today, so it's close to about three years now I've acquired it and I'll uh, share a bit of follow-on stories in terms of what happened to let's Slacks Creek property ever since I purchased it um, so that you know everyone can get some idea and you know again I'm happy to kind of look back and say what should I have done differently and uh, so hopefully that experience will be able to help you in order to leverage into the right investment property for your next one okay so okay so when we look at it now I guess from 2019 perspective in terms of reviewing why I initially made this acquisition it was purely based on a yield so um, at the time of purchase that was giving me a gross rental return of about 6.85 percent uh, in Logan terms that was pretty good uh, well I, I, I'm sure there's gonna be even better ones but you know that was my first uh, interstate purchase so you do have to forgive me that it's not gonna be perfect uh, but I thought you know looking back at now and that was purchased back in 2015 now it's 2019 certainly there's some there's some takeaways that we can uh, deduce from it so uh, at that time it was giving me that 4.6.8 Seven gross rental return and how much is it renting today it's renting about six uh, it's renting about 425 today um, so previously it was 435 initially on day one so the rent has actually dropped back um, therefore the gross rental yield uh, isn't as good but I think it would still be able to achieve about 6.5 uh, as if we're using the same purchase price terms okay so that's where we are sitting with the rental return today How's the current market sentiment in terms of the Slacks Creek? So if we're talking about looking at it from a capital growth perspective, uh, Logan, especially the suburbs like Slacks Creek, Kingston, uh, Woodridge, uh, Logan Central, these haven't actually gone up significantly. I mean, because of this lower social demographic uh, nature. That's why, uh, unfortunately, the price didn't go up as much as we like to. Um, so I think when I purchased back in 2015 for about three twenty-seven thousand uh, dollars, right now it'll probably be still sitting around the same. Maybe just a shy bit higher. I say be optimistic, maybe around three forty uh, or even close to three fifty mark, because the property is actually situated closer to the Springwood uh, part of Slacks Creek. So that's also one of the reasons why I initially bought it is of the location. It's not quite uh, in the old Kingston area, but it was in the real what they call the real Slacks Creek part, which is closer to the uh, uh, to Springwood um, CBD. So um, on that basis, look, you know, I wasn't expecting this property to perform anyway from capital growth perspective. At one point, yes, I'm hoping it will, um, and I'm sure in the next couple of years, when Brisbane has actually started to take off and and grow uh, with more significant growth to come, then um, you know everything under 300 to 400 will be starting to get rare and rare, um, and that's where these um, these property will start to shine. So. Purchase 327 about 2015 now still probably around 330 340 so capital growth wise not fantastic but yield side of things has been great um, and it doesn't really cost me that much uh, given that my loan is on interest only so um, it's not bad it's not a little bad one for cash flow to play okay so since the acquisition of 2015 there has been a couple of teething issues um, if you can recall the Slacks Creek property has got a pool so it's got a swimming pool and that was also one of my first experimental purchase with pool um, based on my personal experience before I had a um, I mean our family had bought a property with a pool back in Auckland and all I can remember is uh, there's just so much work tidying it up um, and so much work in terms of maintenance the pump has to be on every day otherwise the you know the pool is going to go green and um, so in the back of my mind I've always thought about stay away from pool stay away from pool but um, given the nature that this is a southeast Queensland purchase and it's usually pretty hot uh, if you haven't been to southeast Queensland you'll know how hot and humid it is up there during summer or in fact most of the four seasons 
Um, so that's why I still made the decision to actually purchase the Slack Street property with a pool. Now, let's have a look at what happened. So basically across the last couple of years, um, I've had to replace the pump, uh, the pool pump, which cost me about a couple hundred dollars, close to actually I reckon it's about $700, $800. Um, I had to replace the chlorinator, uh, which is again, is, I think is the mechanism that actually pumps out the chlor uh, chlorine. Um, so again, you know, the lifetime of that, probably a couple of years that you had to replace. So, um, you know, I had to replace that again. So that adds up again, another couple hundred dollars. Um, and then the other issue that I've been facing recently is that um, there's been some pool leaks. So that was more of a major issue because uh, what happens is, pool leak is essentially what it sounds. Um, the water will just keep leaking itself uh, in a pool. So, um, and, we, and it's actually quite difficult to troubleshoot and investigate, uh, but what it ended up being is the, is the inflow pipe that goes back um, to, um, to that. So because of the, because of the earth moving nature, um, and, and you know, like that's why the, the pool has probably has been there for over 20 years or 30 years. So the ground movement um, essentially meant that uh, there's been some leaks in the backward pipe that goes back to the, um, to the pump and coordinator. And on that basis, therefore, there's some leaking that's been happening. Um, and it's sort of to the extent where, you know, if you leave the pool as is uh, for a week or so, you can clearly see that the water was, the water, uh, was actually dropping. So we had to spend a bit of money uh, to actually get that fixed up. I think it was uh, close to about a grand to a grand 1.5. Um, so again, you know, all these things add up and they're just teething issues, especially when you think about um, the ongoing maintenance that you have to do. But thankfully the yield was still okay and uh, I've had pretty decent um, tenant from day one. Well, decent in the sense that, uh, you know, they've been paying rent. So factor that in, um, I'm kind of grateful that I've chosen a yield property because it doesn't cost me too much to hold. But you know, these pool issues over the couple, last couple of years could easily add up to about $3,000 to $4,000, which means probably each, each year it's about $1,000 uh, on average. So I had to factor that in as part of the maintenance. So if you're buying a pool uh, or a property that's got a pool, then definitely make sure that you factor in these little bits and pieces. I'll say on, on average, maybe add in another $1,000 on top just in case. Uh, of any major component that breaks down because that's what happened to me, okay?